there's all sorts of different like feeding schedules people are talking about. And I just wanted to tell you what works for me and how I feed my uh, boas from the time they're babies to the time that they're adults. Hi! Hi! Welcome to our channel. Hello. Hello. If you enjoy learning about reptiles and having a good laugh, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Hit. Smash it. Smash. Smash it. Smash it right now. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. Hit. Smash. Smash it. Smash. Okay. Smash. I think it's dumb because you feed rats to the same animals. Just because they're different species of snake doesn't mean they're not snakes. They all get rats. Like, it's not... <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> He's gonna feed rats to three different kinds of snakes, people. Same thing. Thank you very much. So, you see, that's how lots of people may look at it, and that's the problem, you yeah, know? Because you're so dumb. There's an art... Okay, okay, three tips. <laughs> The big ones sometimes get birds, but other than that, uh, it's all uh, the same. Calm down. So there is an art. There's no to... art. It's dangle or dumb. Okay, there is an art. There is no art. There's an art to know how much to feed your babies, when to feed your babies, mm -hmm. how much to feed your males and females of the different snakes that you're keeping. So we're gonna go into depth. <laughs> One rat according to their size. We're gonna Use go. Brain, we're going into depth here. Big with big rats, boas, ball pythons, and super dwarfs. I hope you enjoy these three videos and put them and to rats, use. Wonderful. Mouses. Okay, bye. They're not mouses, they're mice. They're, they're mice. Pinky rats might not have as much bone density or anything in them, but if I want my snakes to be eating rats, no problem. And usually snakes will take mice easier than they will rats but I want my snakes to kind of be on rats as their staple. The reason I like to start them on pinky rats is because as soon as they go to pinky fuzzies, pinky pups, those rats have a lot more bones in them than mice do anyways. So it's just get them started on the pinky rats, they eat pinky rats till they get to pinky fuzzies, then they get on pinky pups, and they're, they're doing good. Having this schedule where, okay, every week I have to feed my snake. And baby snakes, they can be fed every week. But if you really think about it, in the wild, they're not getting a meal every week. Watching their body shape and watching the way that they develop and adjusting kind of accordingly. In the wild, the snakes go through this process of hunting, eating, digesting, and time going by when they eat and it goes through and like some time goes by and then they eat again is better than their body constantly always digesting food. Like five, six months old and you can see like he's not super chubby, he's not super thin, uh, he's not popping out the sides or anything and his weight looks just right. I basically fed him pinkies till he got to fuzzies, fuzzies till he got to pups and once he got to pups, then I kind of change it up a bit. Once they're eating rat pups, I'll feed it every two weeks, every week, every two weeks, every week, and I'll, like, I'll change it up looking at him. So if I look at him and he's looking a little chubbier, then I'll let him go an extra week. If he's starting to just look like this, then I'll feed him again. This kind of feel and looking and watching and getting to know your animal is something that is really overlooked. And people are just putting so much emphasis on schedules and on saying like, okay, these animals maybe don't digest as fast or do these other things, so we have to stick to these schedules. But some of the things on the schedule to me, I find a little ridiculous. As the snakes are getting older, I've kind of fed her a little bit heavier. But even when I look at her, like I, I, I can give her a week off of eating and that's fine because you can see she's it's it's kind of hard to see but she's getting a little chunky she's getting it's like where it's less muscular where there's a bit more fat and it just it flubs out the sides easier and you look at her tail and everything and it just she's starting to turn kind of round and you don't want your snake to be fat and round you want it to be lean 
when she s sits flat, it's like you see like these sides that kind of puff out more. So I'm gonna give her a little bit of time without food and then I'll start feeding her again. She's not like obese or anything. She's just got a little bit of chunk like over here on the side. I want all my snakes to kind of be more like this. You don't see anything popping out the sides. It's just perfect. It's very important to kind of handle your animals, feel them, see what's going on, look at what's going on. You, you can see exactly what's happening. You can see how much they kind of need to eat. You can see when they start getting a little fatter at the end. You can see when they start getting a little too slim and adjust accordingly. Like that's the best way to do it. Look at your animal and say, oh, look, this one, because they all grow at kind of different rates also. Like some, some will be a little chunkier, some will be a little thinner. There's the snakes that you want to grow to breed, and there's the snakes that you're, let's say, going to sell. The snakes that I'm going to sell, once I have them eating a little bit more, I slow them down. I feed them every couple weeks, and that's fine because I'm not trying to rush them to get that big. At the same time, the snakes that I'm trying to grow and breed, I don't just want to force them to get to a certain size. I want them to get that size in a nice, strong, lean way. You want to hold the snake? Yes. Okay, hold the snake. Gentle. It's mommy. Yep. It's a mommy. Daddy. Okay, so you got a snake. Hold it nice and sit, sit back. I know. It's okay, keep it here. Sit nice. So we're telling people about snakes. Yeah. You're doing a good job. I got a me. I got a me. Yeah, it's a me. Okay, you doing good? We're doing I, good. I yeah. You like it? I yeah, the me. I think he, he, he. This is a male that I'm keeping, and this is a female. Even though I fed her a little bit heavier, it actually looks like he's just about the same length, if not even longer. Just don't let it get out, okay? Yes, feed you feed it rats. rats. And, um, it getting bigger is not as important as it staying lean and strong. If they start getting flubby and they're getting just flub, like they're just getting fat, that's not good. Her size, she's, she's taken off a bit and he hasn't he's not as big. These snakes are from the same litter, they're the same age and um, he's still he's healthy. He's fed a little bit less than she was. It's so hard to do this with <laughs> moving little snakes. I don't even know what schedules I've fed them because I've just kind of fed them by looking at them and everything. So you look at him and he's just he's perfectly healthy and usually when I am growing snakes and selling them to people, I'm going to have them eating a little bit less every week, every two weeks, kind of on and off, different meals, looking at them and keeping them kind of slender like this. The other thing that's good with having a snake like this is the moment it goes to someone's home, it's going to eat. I'm trying to feed like 20, 40 babies, I don't want to waste a whole pile of rats or have rats rotting with them because they didn't eat. I want to know that the moment that I offer them food, they eat. So if I notice one kind of doesn't isn't as food driven as the others, I'll just feed it every two weeks. It's not going to be stunted or anything. It's growing perfectly fine. Then we have the one that's a little bit bigger. It's never eaten more than once a week. So power feeding is when you feed an animal multiple meals a week. Sometimes feed her a rat pup, then in between, feed her a rat fuzzy, go up in size, go down in size. When they're young, it's easy for them to go from a little skinny to a little chunky to understand your snake's behavior and see its size and how it, it gets bigger and smaller. 
and what's going on with it. When you get in touch with your animal from the time that it's little, it's going to be a lot easier for you to understand what's going on when it's bigger and understanding how much you need to feed it, when you need to kind of slow down, when you need to speed it up. It gives you a really good feel for things. If you just go and get an adult snake, you don't really know what it's been fed, how often it's been fed, or what's going on. Because some snakes also have, th they'll process the food faster. Sometimes you'll feed two snakes the exact same amount of food, and one will take off, and one will stay a bit smaller. And that can be from the gender, that can also be from genetics. Because your, your females, you, you want them to kind of get bigger. You want them to get to a decent size where they can breed. But to me, like this snake, absolutely perfect and I want it to kind of stay like this the whole time. I want it to just grow and have this the same body shape just be like that throughout its whole life. Through feeding you can maintain a snake size so you can keep a snake smaller like this it still might grow slowly but you can maintain a snake this size but you can never take a snake that is large and size it down. It doesn't work like that. You can take a chubby snake and make it a bit thinner, but you're never gonna take a really long snake and get it smaller or shorter. It's, what's the most efficient way of feeding this animal that it's gonna be nice, strong, healthy, breeding for me, and doing everything that we'd like? Studies show that hungrier animals are healthier. So there's just like a, I'm not even going to get into the studies because I'm not going to show you papers or whatever. And you can believe me or not believe me. It's fine. When I'm keeping male boas and breeding them, I grow them until they're eating small rats. The moment that they're eating small rats, I drop them to every two weeks. And once it actually gets to the point where I feel like they're getting skinny, then I put them on mediums and I drop them to every three weeks. So this guy gets a medium rat every three weeks and he's been good on that for the past few years. He breeds well, he's non-aggressive. When I offer him food, bam, he eats it perfect, but he's not, he's not starving, he's not super skinny, like he's got that nice just square shape to him. You can even see a little bit of his sides, but he's not chubby, he's not round. He's like a nice, perfect square shape, and that's, just what you want. If you want to maintain a smaller snake, you can have a male and this can be his size and he doesn't have to get much bigger than that. But that all has to do with controlling that intake of food from the beginning. I've seen in the feeding schedules where they're saying feed them this much every five weeks or four weeks. To me, I think that's too long. Personally, I wouldn't let a snake go for five weeks without eating, except for like, maybe my biggest snake that gets like a, a six pound meal or something. I wanna feed it every three weeks a medium rat, and that's just fine until let's say he starts getting too skinny, then I up him to a large rat and I'll stick to every three weeks. Once they're adults, whether they're males or females, I have them eating every three weeks and that's perfect. He is, probably like eight years old, but look at how big he is compared to Ty. And he cannot be, he can't be downsized. So he stays this size, I maintain his size. He eats a large rat every three weeks. And you look at that, his size too, he looks fine. He doesn't look like he really needs more than that and I wouldn't really give him any less than that. But basically, a large rat every three weeks, and he's good. He is a Annery Het Albino, and he, right now, I have a lot of male snakes that are carrying a lot more genes, so I will breed them. He's done breeding. He's going to go to someone as a lovely pet. So if you're in Canada and you're interested in a sweetheart, bigger animal, that's Poa. This is Annie. And to me, she's the perfect size for a breeding female. Lots of the time I see boas and people breeding boas that are just huge and fat. And it's, it's another thing when a snake like this just grows as they get older, they do get a bit bigger. But this snake is still lean. 
When she breeds, she gets nice and thick, full of babies, gives birth, recovers nicely, and she's good and healthy. And she eats one large rat every three weeks. And she keeps a nice weight. And then two months before breeding, I'll feed it a meal every week. But other than that, every three weeks. To me, I'd much rather have lean, strong animals and a little bit smaller litters, small, healthy litters. And that to me is a lot better than having these big, fat animals that have giant litters and that just go through a lot of crap trying to recover and everything. I haven't really had any problems with any of my boas recovering. They recover really nice and quick. And I think it's because I keep them nice and lean. It's, it's not about just getting as many babies out of them. It's maintaining healthy snakes. So that to me is the perfect breeding female. This is Sophie. And uh, Sophie has been fed just as much as Annie. They're fed the exact same size meals. Large rat every three weeks. Look at how big Sophie is. Sophie is bigger than Annie. So it just shows. Even if you're feeding animals the same amount of food, depending on what's in their genetics, their size could be slightly bigger or slightly smaller. But Annie could handle eating a jumbo rat, no problem. But uh, I feed her a large rat every three weeks. You need what? This is just a perfect, healthy snake. And that's what I want. I want these lean, strong, wonderful snakes. But I heard that basically in the wild, when you see a lot of pregnant snakes, they don't really look that pregnant. So if we're just pumping them full of fat and trying to get these giant litters, it's better to keep them more lean, keep them strong, couple months before breeding, give them a little bit more to eat, and then breed an animal that looks like this, that's, that's strong, just going to give you a good litter, maybe not as big, but perfectly healthy. She's five years old now, and I'm, I'm pairing her up, so we're going to see if we get some uh, babies out of her, but uh, yeah, I've had pretty good success breeding boas and uh, I'll do a video about breeding later. Sahara here, she's my largest boa and I, f I alternate with her so I feed her a jumbo rat and then a large rat. So she'll get a jumbo rat every three weeks and in the next three weeks she'll get a large rat. And you look at her, she's nice and big but she also isn't fat. She's really nice and lean. She's produced two litters and she still looks optimal condition. So that's what you want to look for. You want a snake that looks like that. You want to see like this shape where it's like a piece of toast or like, like kind of square. You don't want them to be round. Wonderful. Here's a female moon glow I've been growing for the past couple of years. I feed her every two weeks, a medium rat every two weeks. So the big difference when I'm growing a male or a female is that when I grow a male and I get to small rats, I take them to every two weeks. And as soon as I get to mediums, I take them to every three weeks and I just keep them on mediums every three weeks and they are usually good with that the rest of their lives. When it comes to females, I keep them on every week. I'll give them a week off here or there if I feel like they're getting chubby. Once they hit mediums, then I take them to every two weeks. And once they hit large, then I take them to every three weeks. So that's the way that I feed all my boas. Start them off with pinky rats, get them to fuzzy rats, get them to rat pups. 
But as I'm feeding them, I'm paying attention to their weight. I'm seeing if they're getting too chubby. If they're getting too chubby, I'm skipping a meal. If they're a difficult eater, I'll automatically just drop them to every two weeks. And that usually will fix it. If they don't eat, then you can uh, watch my video about trying to get them to eat. But for the most part, boas eat for you no problem. That to me is the perfect feeding schedule. And you can do other things with feeding them larger meals and then going longer periods of time without feeding them. But to me, I feel the sweet spot is three weeks. They can, and if they were to miss another week, you know, give them four weeks without eating if you feel like it, that's fine. But I found kind of this schedule, it works perfect for my snakes. And lots of the time, even when they are breeding, they'll still take a small meal here and there. And I think that's because they're not overfed. Imagine there's a snake and you get it really nice and fat and it's really fat and now it's whole pregnancy it doesn't eat and it's kind of eating that fat versus you don't get the snake as fat you get it like you get it the right size you grow it for four years you grow it for five years if you have to it's just in optimal condition it goes into breeding and it still eats small meals for you I actually kind of prefer that because I know it's still eating the meals it's doing what it has to do I, I like that a lot more than it going a super long time without eating I don't like snakes to go too long without eating it's not good for anyone to really starve even if they're made for it even if they could go let's say a year without eating why do that to them but then at the same time I think it's just as unhealthy to be constantly feeding them to be overfeeding them with babies feeding them weekly sometimes is too much they get really chunky and dropping that to every two weeks every now and then there's nothing wrong with that it's not going to stunt your animals growth out in the wild they're lucky if they get a meal once a month so when it comes to feeding babies pay attention to them look look at what's going on and all throughout their life like look even this one that's being fed every two weeks she's kind of in between she isn't really chubby well she's a little chubby you see she doesn't really have as much that toasty shape she's a little bit chunky and I'm only feeding her every two weeks so I think most people when they want to breed an animal they'll feed them every week and for me I just want to get her there and keep her in optimal condition if she doesn't get to breeding size doesn't really matter I got other snakes to breed and when you grow snakes slowly and take your time and really enjoy it it's really exciting because in two years she'll probably be ready to breed and then every year continuing like onward I have other snakes oh now this snakes ready to breed and if you plan it nicely consider this instead of just taking a snake and breeding it and breeding it and breeding it until it dies when you breed a snake and it gives birth to its child this snake takes about four years before it can breed so if that snake breeds and then you give it a year off and then the next year you breed it and then you give it a year off and the next year you breed it then after that you can replace it with this one so now it's only bred like three times three four times and then you can retire it you can give it to someone as a pet you could sell it to someone as a pet you kind of don't really I wouldn't want to take a breeder and then sell it to someone that wants to keep breeding it I want to kind of like have a refresh every four years where every four years the snakes that I was breeding now I can sell them to someone as a pet that wants to enjoy a nice docile big snake that's already bred and done all that and then I can continue with the new young ones and then they only breed a few times I'm treating the animals with respect and it's just like I'm taking something from them I want to give them something back I want to give them a good life and a, I don't know anyways 
Back to those feeding schedules. I've seen those feeding schedules so much and I really have to say that I disagree with them. I, I don't think that you should... And, and now think about this. Yeah, okay, so you feed it a larger meal and then you go five weeks versus you feed it a bit of a smaller meal that's still a large meal. It, it takes a long time for them to digest, but it, it, the smaller meal goes through them a bit easier than the larger one. The larger the meal is, the more of a toll it's going to take on their body digesting it. So there's some breeders that believe in feeding it weekly small, small meals. So we're going to give it a small meal every week. Then there's other ones that say we're going to give it a large meal, like once a month or less than that. And then there's kind of that in-between, and I'm, I'm in that in-between. I think that three weeks is perfect. If they go a fourth week or whatever here or there, it's not going to cause them problems. But get them to large, feed them every three weeks. How easy is that? You give it a large rat every three weeks, and you're done. It, it just, it's a simple system that has worked perfectly for me. So to anyone that... Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that was wonderful, wasn't it? Now make sure you click circle. Yeah, click the circle. Yeah, I did. And then watch this video or this one. No. Yeah. No. Yes, it's not that hard. Which one appeals to you more? Is it this one or is it this one?